right, so let's get started by going over what all comes inside of your Mata Crochet Garden Kit. So let's open up this box and see what we've got. All right, so inside you will find first the crochet pattern in this nice, really well-printed little booklet for you. Next, you'll also see this QR code to getting to the video course, but I'm assuming that since you're here, you've already figured this one out. Then we have our skeins of yarn that we're gonna be using to create all of our cactus friends. These little tiny skeins for making the flowers. And of course, green for making all of our cactuses. Then we also have all of our notions. So we've got our crochet hook, our stitch markers, our tapestry needles, and our embroidery needle all inside of here. We've got this big bag of stuffing that we're gonna be using to stuff the inside of our plushes. And then here we have the safety eyes and the black embroidery floss we're gonna be using to make their faces. Alright, so now that we've checked out everything that's inside, let's go ahead and get started on making one of our cactus friends. So for this video tutorial, we're going to be working on this potted sitting planter. So we're going to go ahead and get started on making the leaves. Alright, let's go ahead and crack open our green yarn. And we're going to get started on the leaves of our potted planter. So we're going to begin by forming a magic loop. So to do that, we're going to make a bit of a finger guns here with our left hand. And then we'll take our thumb and we're going to pinch the tail, so that's the side not attached to our skein of yarn, against that lower digit of our index and our middle finger on our left hand. Then with our right hand, we're going to flip our left hand over and then take the working yarn, which is attached to our skein, we're going to wrap it around the top digit of these two fingers on our left hand. Then we'll flip our hand, our left hand over, and we're going to cross the working yarn over what we have pinched. We'll flip our left hand back over, and we're going to wrap another loop around the bottom digit of our left hand. Flip our hand over one last time, and then take our working yarn and sort of wedge it behind our thumb. Then when we've done that, we can go ahead and grab that really nice crochet hook from our notions. And we're gonna take it and we're gonna slip it underneath that top loop and use the hook to hook the bottom loop. Then we'll pull that bottom loop underneath the top loop. And then we're gonna take both of our hands and flip them over and then bring them together so that our right hand's touching the back of our left hand. So you can see I've got one loop on my hook and one loop on my finger still, and I'm holding everything really nice and snug here in my left hand. I'm gonna take my index and my thumb on my right hand, and I'm gonna pinch both the loop on my hook and the one still on my hand. Just kind of pinch them really tightly together. Once you've got those pinched, you can let go very gently with your left hand and use your right hand to kind of help slide those loops off of your left hand. So when you've done that, we need to tension our yarn next. So to tension it, we're going to take not this tail, this is the stuff that's not attached to our skein, we're going to take the tail, that working yarn that is attached to our skein, we're going to loop it over our left hand index finger. I also like to grab the working yarn and the rest of the fingers on my hand. And then we're going to take our thumb and our middle finger and we're going to pinch that wrap. So where this tail and this loop come together, we're going to pinch that so we can let go with our right hand. Once you've done that, we also need to tighten this loop here on our hook. So to do that, we can sort of pull our left hand index finger up and that tightens the loop on our hook. And then we can take our hook and we can yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop on our hook. And when you've done that, that forms our magic loop and that means everything's locked into place. Nothing's going to come undone. You can let go with your left hand now. 
So before we can start with our first row, we need to do a little untangling here. If you look, we've got a little bit of a pretzel twist happening with our loop and our tail. We're just going to grab the tail and pull it so it's not going through that loop anymore. And then when we start working, we're going to be working both inside of that little loop that we've made and then also over that tail that we have for our magic loop. All right, so round one, which you can see up here in the top left hand corner, and that will be here throughout all of the video. You'll be able to see the pattern as we go. Round one calls for three single crochet stitches to be placed inside of this magic loop. So to do that, we're going to take our hook and we're going to go underneath both of those strands, the loop itself and the tail. So we're just going to from front to back put our hook underneath those and then we're going to yarn over which means to put the working yarn over our hook and then using our hook we're going to pull it through our magic loop and then up a little bit we don't want it to be super tight we want it to be kind of loose and then to finish our first single crochet stitch we're going to do that same thing we're going to yarn over again by putting the working yarn from our left finger over our hook, and then we're going to pull through both of those loops left on our hook. And that forms our first single crochet stitch inside of our magic loop. Let's do that one more time very slowly together. So again, we'll take our hook, we'll go through the center of our magic loop underneath both strands, we'll yarn over by yarning putting the yarn over our hook and then we're going to hook it through that loop and then draw up a little bit and we're going to do the same thing again we'll yarn over and draw through both loops left on our hook we need to make one more of these before we are ready to end this round so we'll take our hook one last time from front to back yarn over draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through both. So next we're going to want to mark the very first single crochet that we made. So you can grab your stitch markers, whichever ones you'd like to use. I'm going to use this pink one. And we're going to mark it by sliding it underneath the front and the back of the little V that the top of our stitch is going to make. So I'm just going to slip it underneath and then I'm going to lock it in place. Then we're going to do the magic part of our magic loop. We're going to take that tail that we've been putting all of our stitches over and we'll give it a tug to bring our first round to a close. Alright, so let's move on to round two. So round two is our first round where we're going to be working inside of our first round single crochet, so not in a loop. So when we work inside of a single crochet stitch, just like how we slipped our stitch marker underneath both sides, we're going to do the same thing with our hook. So round two is telling us that we need to increase in each stitch. So when we do that, we're going to be placing two single crochet stitches inside of one stitch from the past row. So we're going to start by taking our stitch marker out and this is how we start pretty much every round when we're working with Amigurumi. We'll take our stitch marker out and then we're going to push our hook from front to back through both loops of that stitch that we made. And you can use your fingernail on your right hand to kind of help you grab both of those. So once we've got both of those on our hook, it's just like making a single crochet stitch with magic loop. We'll yarn over, draw through the fabric of our work and pull up a little bit, then yarn over and pull through both loops to make one single crochet. Before we finish our increase, it's a good idea to put our stitch marker back in place because we always want to put it in the first stitch of each round. All 
Right, so I've only made one single crochet stitch. I need to make two to make an increase. So if you look, you can see there's that little hole here that's created by my first stitch going through my previous round's first stitch. We're going to go through that same space. So we'll just push our hook from front to back straight through. And then we're going to make another single crochet stitch in that same space. So pull up, yarn over, and pull through. And if you look, you can see we have two V's coming out of the same hole, which means we've made our first increase. So we need to make two more of these because we had three stitches in our first round. So we're going to go to our next V, this one here, and from front to back, push your hook through, yarn over. We'll make another one in that same space. And then we'll make one more increase in the last stitch of our round. Another thing to note here in the top left, you can see that at the end of this instruction, there's a little parentheses with a number in it. And that's telling you how many stitches you should have at the end of your round. So if we want to count to double check that we've got enough stitches, we can pull our last stitch up long and take our hook out. And the way that I like to count my stitches is I go back to my stitch marker and I count the little V's that you can see, and I sort of look at the side of my piece. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. We also don't count the loop on our hook because it's sort of like a stitch in progress. All right, so that wraps up round two. Let's move on to round three. Before we start round three, the tail left over from our magic loop might be kind of annoying to work with. So to make it a little easier, we can take some scissors and we can just snip it short. Don't snip it off though. We want a little bit of a tail that'll help keep our magic loop secure. All right, so let's move on to round three. And you can see round three, we've got some asterisks with some instructions inside of them. So in crochet, when you see that, it means that we need to repeat everything that's inside of those asterisks, however many times it takes for us to get all the way around our round. So we'll start off with the first part of our asterisk by taking our stitch marker out and placing one single crochet stitch in the stitch that our stitch marker was in. Don't forget to put your stitch marker back in that first stitch since it's the first one of our round. Then the second part of our asterisk sequence is an increase. So in the next stitch, we're going to put two single crochet stitches because it wants us to increase. So that is one repetition of that sequence, we're going to keep repeating it. So putting one single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase in the next stitch. We'll keep repeating that same sequence until we get to the end of our round. So we'll start over by putting one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. Follow that with an increase in the next stitch. And then we've got one more sequence left to make. And that takes us to the end of the round. So let's move on to round four. Round four, we're going to continue using a sequence. So we'll start off by placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So when you see a number in front of the abbreviation for single crochet, it's not 
do that many in one stitch because that's an increase, right? It's do that many stitches before we do our increase. So this is two single crochet. We did our first. Here's our second. And then in that next stitch, we're going to increase. And we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that wraps up round four for me. Let's move on. All right, so for round five, we're going to start our new sequence by placing one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of our round. And we're going to follow that with an increase. You may be wondering, this is exactly like round three, and you're right, it is, but we're going to be going around three more times with this sequence. So let's go ahead and continue repeating, placing one single crochet stitch in the next, and an increase, until we get all the way around our piece. All right, that wraps up round five. Rounds six through nine, all we need to do is place one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And that's gonna be for four rounds total. So I will see you back here once I get a little closer to the end of round nine. Alright, I am wrapping up the end of round nine, and you can see my leaf is getting, has gotten a lot longer since you last saw. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and work on round ten, so we'll take our stitch marker out. And it's time for us to learn how to do a decrease now. So we'll start off with our repetition sequence here of one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. And then we need to decrease, so when we increase, we put two stitches inside of the same stitch. When we decrease, we make one stitch take up the space of two stitches. So to do a decrease, we're going to take our hook and we're going to go from front to back through our next stitch, just like we would if we were making a regular single crochet. Then we'll yarn over and draw through our fabric and pause, because we need to repeat that same process in the next stitch. So we'll go through the next, Yarn over, draw through, and then we're going to finish this off just like we would a single crochet, except we have one extra loop on our hook. So we'll yarn over and draw through all three, and if you look you can see it makes so that there's one V taking up the space of two stitches. So let's continue that sequence of one single crochet and then another decrease. We'll do this one together nice and slow. And we'll continue that sequence all the way around. All right, and that wraps up round 10 for me. Round 11, we're gonna continue decreasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So here's my first. And then we're going to follow that with a decrease. And we'll continue that sequence all the way around. And that wraps up round 11 for me. Alright, so round 12 is our last round of our leaf. So we'll start by placing one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of our round. And we're going to mark that stitch just like we have everything so far. And we'll follow that with a decrease. And then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, so I have finished my last decrease, so now it's time to fasten off. So to do that, we'll take our stitch marker out, 
and then we're going to slip stitch in the stitch that we just had our stitch marker in. So to do a slip stitch, we'll take our hook, go from front to back, and yarn over and draw through the fabric of our work. But rather than yarning over and then drawing through both, we're just going to keep drawing that loop through until it's the only one left on our hook. Then we can take some scissors and we need to cut ourselves a little bit of a tail to sew with. We're going to use it to attach all of these leaves to the finished product. So we'll cut ourselves maybe eight inches or so. So just take your scissors and snip. Then you can take your hook and you can just pull until that last stitch pulls all the way through. And then to finish fastening off, we're going to take that same loop that we just pulled through and we're going to tug to tighten our slip knot, our slip stitch down into a knot. So then you can fold your leaf flat and you can see we've got one. We need to make another five to complete our pattern. So here are all six leaves ready to go. So I'm ready to move on and make the pot. All right, so to make the pot of our plant, we're gonna start with that kind of off-white color. And we'll begin by forming a magic loop, just like we did with the leaves. And then we have that magic loop formed. We'll start with round one by placing six single crochet stitches inside. Once we have all six stitches placed inside our magic loop, go ahead and give that tail a tug. and we are ready to move on to round two. For round two, we're gonna increase in each stitch. So we'll put two single crochet stitches in every stitch from round one. Don't forget, you'll wanna mark the first stitch of every round so we know when our round ends. All right, that's the end of round two for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and give my magic ring tail one more really tight tug and I'm gonna trim it kind of close because I find it gets in my way as I continue working around. So we'll just give it a quick snip. And we are ready to move on to round three. For round three, we're gonna start an increasing sequence by placing one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of our round. We'll follow that with an increase. And we're going to continue that sequence all the way around. That's round three, done for me. All right, so for round four, we're going to continue our increasing pattern by placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches. So here's my first and my second. And then we're going to place an increase in the stitch right after that. And then we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. All right, that wraps up that round for me. For round five, we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next three stitches. And then we're going to increase. And we'll repeat that same sequence all the way around. Alright, that's round five done. Round six is a lot like the last couple of rounds. We're going to place one single crochet stitch in the next four stitches from round five. So here's my first. Then we'll increase. And just like before, that same sequence will repeat all the way around. All right, here's my last increase, and that wraps up round six. Round seven, we're gonna place one single crochet stitch in the next five stitches.
then we'll increase in the stitch after that. And just like before, that sequence is going to get repeated all the way around. And that wraps up round seven. All right, round eight is our last increase round of the pot. So we're going to place one single crochet stitch in the next six stitches. We'll follow that with an increase. And just like before, that same sequence will repeat all the way around. And that wraps up the end of round eight. All right, so for round nine, it's important for us to know where the front and the back of our work is. So the side that we've been looking at this entire time sort of facing us, this is the right side or the front, and the side that has our magic loop tail and sort of these lines that run along the rows, that is the back or the wrong side. That's going to be the side that's the inside of our pot. So for round nine, we're going to be sort of changing directions by working in the back loops. So the back loops are the, side, the ones that are closest to the back or wrong side of our work. So to work round nine, we're going to take our stitch marker out. We're going to be making single crochet stitches, but rather than going through both of those loops of our V, we're only going to catch the back part of that and form a single crochet stitch just in that back loop. So we'll go ahead and push our hook through just the back loop of our normal stitch. And then we'll make a single crochet stitch like normal. And of course mark that since it is the first stitch of our round. And if you look you can see we're going to leave behind the front loop. That's going to be important whenever we get to the assembly section because the legs are going to attach along that seam. This also will make the bottom of the pot sit flat whenever we have it sat up and displayed. So we're going to continue working around in just those back loops all the way around. Alright, here's my last back loop only single crochet of the round. I'm ready to move on to round 10. So for rounds 10 through 20, all we need to do is put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. And we're going to be working in both the front and back loop, just like a normal single crochet, crochet stitch. So I will see you back here whenever I get a little closer to the end of round 20. Alright, so I am wrapping up round 20, and as you can see, I've got quite a bit of my pot done here. And I'm ready to start round 21. So remember when we turned and started working on the side of the pot, we worked in the back loops only? Well, for this round, we're going to be working in the front loop only, because we're going to leave the back loop to attach the soil onto. So like with the back loop only, we're just going to take our hook and slip it through the front loop and then make a single crochet stitch like normal. So we'll mark that one since it's the first of our round. And then we're going to continue adding single crochet stitches to the front loops of this entire round. Alright, here's my last front loop only single crochet, and I'm ready to move on to my next round. For round 22, all we'll need to do is put one single crochet stitch, and we're going to be working like a normal one through both the front and back loop. We'll just put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around.
All right, that wraps up round 22. We're gonna be working slip stitches inside of each stitch from round 23. So remember when we closed off our leaves, we made a slip stitch. So we'll go through our next, both front and back, draw through a loop, and then just keep drawing that loop through until we have a slip stitch. We're gonna slip stitch all the way around this round. And while you're slip stitching, it's a good idea to not pull the stitches super tight. Keep them kind of loose. We want it to kind of leave like a little bit the V that we're making kind of on the front of our work. Alright, that's my last lip stitch of the round. Alright, so we're ready to make round 24, which is actually the, like, kind of the brim, the lip of the pot. And we're going to do that by chaining two. So to chain, we're just going to take our working yarn and pull through, and then pull through again, and that makes two chains. And then we're going to take our pot and we're going to turn it. And we're going to be working along, so we're like holding it upside down now. We're going to be working along those slip stitches that we made, but we're actually going to be working underneath them. So if you look really closely, you can see here's the V of our slip stitch. We're going to be putting all of our work technically in the front loop of round 23's single crochet. So we're going to start off by making a double crochet. And to make a double crochet, we're going to begin with a yarn over. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook. And then to get to our first stitch, we're going to take our hook and we're going to kind of dig underneath and grab just that first front loop from round 23. The first few are kind of hard to get at, but it gets a little easier as we work our way around. So yarn over, grab that front loop, then we're going to yarn over again and draw through the fabric. Yarn over and draw through two loops, then yarn over and draw through two loops. And we're going to keep working, and if you look you can kind of see the stitches I'm going to be working in are these here. They're a little easier to see. So let's make the next couple of stitches together. We'll make our next double crochet, we'll yarn over. And then we're going to grab that front loop right underneath our slip stitch, draw through, yarn over, draw through both, and we'll keep working around going through that front loop of round 23. Alright, so now that I am all the way around, I'm going to slip stitch to the top of that chain 2 that I made. So I'm just going to go through both sides of the chain and slip stitch. And that wraps up the top brim of the pot and the pot completely. So we are ready to fasten off. I'm going to do that by cutting just a little bit of a tail. We don't need very much maybe six inches. We're going to pull that last slip stitch through. And then we're going to weave that tail in because we're going to attach the soil to the top, that front loop, that, or the back loop that we left behind. So we'll go ahead and take our tail and thread it through one of the tapestry needles that comes with our kit. 
and I'm going to send mine up into the double crochet and then down through the inside of my pot. So I'm just catching the backs of these stitches and weaving that tail in. And it should be okay as long as you weave it in underneath that round that we're going to attach the soil to. You can just leave it inside of the pot. All right, so that wraps up the pot. Let's get the soil attached. All right, so for the soil, we're gonna be working with the dark brown that comes with our kit. And we're gonna be attaching to the loops left behind from round 21 of our pot. So let's go ahead and attach and first I want to point out that there is a little bit of a jog. If you look where round 21 starts and where round 21 ends, they're a little higher than one another. I find it's not best to start in this area where the jog is. It makes it really hard to attach and to get the right tension. I find I like to start sort of over on the other side of the pot whenever I'm working. And then we also need to make sure we're attaching so that our stitches are facing the right direction. So we want to attach so that we are going to be working around the pot clockwise, which means we're going to want to be facing the front of our pot whenever we attach. So we're going to be looking at it from this angle, and I like to sort of roll the edges of the pot down and squish it so that that loop is at the very top because that's where we're going to be attaching and that's where we're going to be working. All right, so as long as we're across the way from where that jog is, we can attach any place we want. So remember, we're going to be looking at our pot's front. We don't want to be facing it from this direction. We're going to be looking at it from the front. We'll take our hook and we're going to go underneath one of those loops left behind. Just push our hook through from front to back. Then we're going to take our dark brown and to attach, we'll go ahead and take our working yarn and wrap it around our hook. Then pull it through our loop. And then we'll take our tail and we're going to pull it through the loop that we just pulled up and all the way through. And that ties a knot. And then as we work, we're going to hold this tail behind us and crochet over it. So we're going to take our hook through that same place we tied our knot, and we're going to yarn over and draw through, going through the next back loop left behind from the pot, and we're going to create a single crochet. So we'll grab that back loop, and we're going to go under our tail as well. We'll yarn over, then yarn over, and draw through both loops on our hook. And that forms our first stitch of the round, which means we need to mark it. And if you look at the top left up here, you can see we need to do a sequence decrease. So that's the first stitch. We need to make five more single crochet. So again, the next little back loop that we have and the tail. There's my second. Take it nice and slow until you get the hang of working in those back loops. We've got one more. So when we get those first six, we're going to decrease. We can also cut this tail since we've worked it in for six stitches now. So I'm going to go ahead and just give that a quick snip. All right, so we're ready to do our first decrease in the back loops. So we'll grab our first loop, drop, go for our next drop decrease. And we're going to continue that sequence all the way around, but I'm going to stick with you and not speed up this next section because I want to show you how to get over that jog. It can be a little confusing. So let's keep working together. All 
Alright, so I'm getting close to my jog, so I'm going to do my decrease, because that's where I'm at in my sequence. And then if you look, you can see I've got one more loop left here, and then I sort of have to shift down a row. So it's going to be, it's fairly easy once you're kind of right up on it. You'll just single crochet and then go through that next one. If you're going to decrease in this spot, just remember you're going to decrease there and in this one as well. But for me, I just did one decrease, so I'm going to continue single crocheting around. So I'm just going to go through that hook loop just like I would my other ones. And if you look, it kind of pulls it close to your working yarn anyway. All right, so I'm going to continue around until I get to my last stitch of the round. Alright, so I'm at my last two stitches, and you can see in our last stitch there's already, it looks like there might be a stitch coming out of it. Just remember, that's where we attached on, and that loop that we attached and pulled through doesn't actually count as a stitch. So we're going to go ahead and do our decrease in these last two back loops. And we are ready to move on to our next round for the soil. Alright, so for round two of our soil, we're going to continue decreasing, so we'll stick our, take our stitch marker out. Then we're going to put a single crochet stitch in that same space, and of course mark. Then we're going to continue single crocheting, because we need to make five of them. Then we have our first five, we'll put a decrease in the next two stitches, and then we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Alright, here's my last decrease of round two. I'm ready to move on to round three. Okay, so for round three we're going to continue decreasing. We're going to single crochet in the next four stitches. And we'll follow that with a decrease. And we're going to repeat that same sequence all the way around. Here's my last decrease. I'm ready to move on to round four. Round four, we're going to continue decreasing. So we'll single crochet in the next three stitches. And we'll follow that with a decrease. And we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. my last decrease, and we're ready to move on to round five. Alright, so for round five we're going to keep decreasing by placing one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches, then we'll follow that with a decrease, and we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. That wraps up round five for me. All right, so for round six, we're going to keep decreasing. So we'll place one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. Then we'll follow that with a decrease. And we'll continue that sequence all the way around. And we're ready to move on in our pattern. Alright, so before we make our last round of crochet for the soil, we need to do some embroidery and some safety eye placement. So I'm going to take my hook, I'm going to pull that last stitch long, 
And before we get started, first let's locate the back of the pot. So if you look, the place where our front loop left behind, the bottom of the pot, that jog there, and then the jog at the top of the pot, that's the back. So we don't want to put our face on this side. We're going to just turn our pot so that we can add details to the front of the face here. Then we're going to be putting our safety eyes between rounds 14 and 15 of the pot itself. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my safety eyes and I'm going to use the stem of it to help count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So between 14 and 15, which would be right here. You can, of course, move your smile up a little higher or make it a little lower. I actually think I'm going to move mine up one round. And then I'll take my other eye, and they are six stitches apart. So I'm going to count one, two, three. I'm counting those holes. Four, five, six stitches. Now, of course, feel free to play around with this. If you want the eyes to be closer or further or higher, my only advice is to make sure that you don't put the eyes so high that they're not inside or underneath the soil because then we won't be able to hide the backs. All right, so once you've got the eyes in a place that you really like, we're gonna take the little plastic parts and snap them onto the backs of the eyes. All right, so next up, we need to go ahead and grab that embroidery needle that came with our kit. And then once we have that embroidery needle inside of that Notions bag, we also had a length of embroidery floss. We want to use one quarter of the floss that we have here, which I think should be about 9, 10 inches or so. Once we've got that embroidery floss, we're going to go ahead and thread it through the eye of our needle. And then we need to tie a knot at the end. So to do that, I like to take the floss and I pinch the very end of it against the needle. And then I wrap it counterclockwise, oh, six times or so. And I hold it really tight and slide all of those wraps down over the eye of the needle. And keep sliding, sliding, sliding until I get to the end, which ties a nice knot. All right, so we're going to send the smile in the row, two rows underneath our eye, and then in line with the inside edge of the eye. Then we'll sew a really long stitch to that same spot in the gap between those rows, even with the inside of the other eye. Then we need to add the corners of our smile. So we're going to come up one row above and one stitch over. So sort of even with the outside of the eye. And we're going to go through that same corner space. Be really careful not to accidentally sew through any of the brown of our soil. Then we're going to repeat that on the other side. So the row above on the outside corner, and then come in here. And then we need to come up so that we can make the eyebrows next. So I'm going to make the rights, the left sides first. So I'm going to come up two rows above the eye and then kind of in line with the inside corner. So you can see that makes the smile. And the eyebrows sort of slant down. So I'll make the first one here by going one stitch over and then to the outside of the eye. And then I'm going to repeat that same shape on the other side. Then we have the smile and the eyebrows sewn on. We can flip the pot inside out so that we can tie a knot. And we're going to do that by tying a surface knot. So I loop my embroidery floss over the surface of my work. And then I'm going to grab just a little of the fabric 
and then sew up through that loop that I've made. And then by pulling tight, it ties a knot. We don't need to cut this embroidery floss tail. We're going to just hide it inside of the pot itself. So we've got the face sewn on. Next up, we're going to go ahead and stuff the inside of the pot and a little bit of the soil too. We don't want to use too much stuffing because we don't want the soil to sort of curve up out of the top of the pot. And we also don't want to lose this flat bottom of our pot either. So use just enough to keep it stuffed, but not too much to kind of make it spherical in shape. All right, so we've got our face embroidered, our safety eyes attached, and we're stuffed. We're ready to finish up the soil. All right, so we are ready for round six of our pot. So we're gonna go ahead and close the top off by decreasing in each stitch all the way around. All right, once we've gone all the way around, we are ready to fasten off. So to do that, we'll cut just a little bit of a tail, pull our last stitch through, tighten down, and then we're gonna sew through the remaining stitches with our embroidery needle, I'm sorry, our tapestry needle. So go ahead and thread that tail we just cut through the needle. And then we're gonna sew through the six remaining stitches and pull tight to cinch the top of the soil closed. Then we're going to tie a surface knot by looping that tail over the surface of our work. We'll sew just a little bit of the fabric of our work and then up through that loop. And then holding that loop close to our work, we'll pull. Then once that knot is tied, we're going to weave our tail in by just sending it down and out through a spot in our pot. Then we can pull it tight and snip, and it is woven inside of the pot. And that wraps up the pot, the face, and the soil. So let's move on and get started on the arms. All right, switching back to that off-white color for the arms, we're going to go ahead and get started by forming a magic loop. Then we're going to place six single crochet inside of that magic loop. Time to do the magic part, we'll pull the tail. And that wraps up round one. Round two, we're going to place one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of the round. And we'll follow that with an increase. And we're going to repeat that sequence all the way around. Right, now that we've finished round two, we can give that magic ring tail a tug and then snip it short but not off. And we're ready to move on to round three. Rounds three through four, all we'll need to do is put one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. So I'll catch you back here when I get to the end of round four. Alright, I am wrapping up round four. I'm ready for round five. So for round five, we're going to place one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of the round. Follow that with a decrease. And we'll repeat that another two times. And that forms the hand of our pot's arm. So for the next 12 rounds, so rounds 6 through 17, all we're going to do is add one single crochet stitch to each stitch all the way around. So I will see you back here whenever I get close to the end of round 17. Alright, I am wrapping up the last round of my arm. 
And I'm going to fasten off by slip stitching to the stitch that my stitch marker was just in. And then I'm going to leave a long tail, probably 12 inches or so, because I'm going to use that to attach the arm onto the body. So I'll pull through and then tighten up that slip stitch. And that's one arm. Here are both of my arms. So I'm ready to move on and make the legs. All right, so let's make the legs. We're gonna start the same way we've started everything so far by tying a magic loop. There are my first six stitches placed inside, so I'm gonna pull that tail. And I'm ready to start round two. Round two, we'll place one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of the round. And of course, mark that stitch. Then we'll increase in the next. And we'll repeat that sequence all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and give my magic loop tail another tug, and then I'm going to clip it kind of short so it's out of my way. And we are ready to move on to our next round. So rounds three through six, all we need to do is put one single crochet stitch in every stitch all the way around. So I will get back to you whenever I'm a little closer to the end of round six. Alright, I'm getting to, I'm getting ready to wrap up the end of round six. And for round seven, we need to decrease, so we're going to start off with one single crochet stitch in the first stitch of the round. We'll follow that with a decrease, and we'll repeat that two more times. And that forms the foot of the leg. So for the next 14 rounds, between round 8 and round 22, all we need to do is place one single crochet stitch all the way around. So I will see you back here when I get a little closer to the end of round 22. All right, I am wrapping up round 22 of the leg. So to finish off, we'll take our stitch marker out, slip stitch to the stitch that it was in, and then we'll cut ourselves a little bit of a tail, maybe 12 inches or so, pull that slip stitch through, and tighten. And that's one of our legs, but we need two before we can move on. So I have both of my legs, so we are ready to move on to assembly. All right, so we're gonna begin assembly by attaching the leaves to the soil. And we wanna attach them so that they sort of spiral around. So the first four will kind of form a little bit of a clover shape. And then the last two, we're going to kind of attach, oops, they'll attach sort of like they're overlapping one another on the tops of the first round that we make. So let's start with our first leaf. I'm going to make it so that it sort of angles over the right eye on the front of the pot. I'll get all these other leaves out of my way while I work. So we'll take that yellow tapestry needle We'll thread the tail from our leaf through. And then we're just going to attach it to the soil right at the base, sewing through both layers of our leaves fabric. So we'll grab some of the soil and come up through both layers of the leaf. And we're just going to whip stitch it to the soil.
And once we get all the way across, we can tie a surface knot. And then weave that green tail in and inside of the pot. And we're going to attach all the leaves exactly the same, working our way around until we get to our last leaves. Alright, so I have my first four leaves attached. So to add my last two, they're going to kind of overlap that first row. And I like mine to kind of go in between the first two leaves that I sewed on, and then the third and fourth leaves that I sewed on. So they kind of stand up. So we're going to sew them on the exact same way we did the other ones. We'll thread that through. Then once we have all the leaves attached, I'm going to cut all of those tails that I've woven in. And that is the leaves all attached. So let's get the arms and legs attached next. Alright, next up, let's go ahead and get the legs attached. So the legs are the longer of the two that we've made. And they get sewn flat, and they're going to actually get attached right along that front loop left behind at the bottom of the pot. So let's go ahead and thread our tapestry needle with one of the tails left over from those legs. And then we're going to be sewing through both layers and attaching them so that they are even with the eyes. So we'll just go through that front loop left behind and then through both layers of the fabric. And we're going to keep going through the front loop, both layers of the fabric. Alright, and when it's time to tie a knot and weave our tail in, make sure your tapestry needle is coming up through the body and not through the leg. And then just like with the leaves that we were going to do, just like with the leaves, we're going to tie ourselves a surface knot. So we'll loop our yarn over the surface of our work. So up through that loop from a little bit of our fabric. Hold the loop close while we tie a knot, and then weave that tail end in somewhere inside the pot. And of course, cut that tail when we're done. That is one leg attached. We're ready to attach the other one on the other side. Alright, I have both legs attached, so now we're ready to attach the arms. So the arms are going to stay open at the top, so we're going to attach them on the sides of the body, and we're going to whip stitch all the way around the opening so that they sort of stay open and curve gently. So, just like before, we're going to thread that tapestry needle with the tail left over from when we made the arm. And right here on the side of the body, in line with the eye, we'll whip stitch the arm on by grabbing some of the fabric of the body and then each of the six stitches of the arm. Just kind of rotating our plant as we work. Then when we're all the way around, we'll tie another surface knot into the body, not the arm. And then weave that tail in. And cut. Then we need to repeat with the other arm on the other side of the pot. And just like that, with both arms attached, our planter is complete.